I made it safely through the night. I told you guys I would be back with you in a couple days. That's awesome. I'm headed out to find the waterfall now for the day to cool off. Got my swimming trunks on. Bringing my drone with me just in case I get the ears to fly it over the falls or something. The particular drive up from the campground where I was just at up here, it's about six miles, but it's really an unpleasant slow curbing drive with potholes galore. So once you get past all that and you get down to where the waterfall is though, I think it kind of makes up for it. It's a rather warm day today, so chances are I am gonna actually go into the water. The air is starting to get cooler to the smell, so it must be getting close. Holy cow. Wow. There are people here somewhere, I just don't know where they are. There, there was a car up top and there's a bunch of clothes over on that log over there, so. About to just sleep the whole day away there, buddy boo. Putz. <laughs> well, I just changed my idea. I, this is pretty random. Might sound random, but I'm gonna go to the ocean. <laughs> and I don't even know what really sparked it. It's just uh you can get to the Pacific Ocean about 70 miles from Olympia, 70, 80 miles. So it just dawned on me that I'm I'm out this way. Uh, let's just go to the ocean for a day because it can be really peaceful and nice to get away and to kind of contrast what the northern Pacific Ocean looks like compared to like the Atlantic or something else, some, somewhere else along my travels lately. So we'll go try this out. <laughs>
remember I had that bad experience on my last big trip, getting stuck somewhere, and I basically said, okay, well, never gonna drive on the beach again. Well, drove and camped on the beach when I was down in Corpus Christi, Texas, Padre Island, but you know, there was a bunch of people there. And then when people were asking me, why would you think it's okay to drive an RV on the beach, you know? have to remember you know this is where I'm from and you know when people start saying you know you're not allowed to do that anywhere in the country well Ocean Shores like and, and Padre Island are I guess two of the, of the exceptions you can and you are encouraged to drive onto the beach uh, should you if you're in a two-wheel drive vehicle eh, I don't know but you can you do and this is the way I learned how to enjoy the beach is to drive your car your vehicle onto the beach. So we'll go take a look here and see uh, how my confidence is doing once we see the sand. I see some two-wheel drive cars out there. We'll uh, give it a shot. Alright, cue the epic drama music. Kitty. On the beach, just like that. That's easy. Okay, I'm really putting my microphone windscreen to the test today because it's really windy out here at the beach. But this is pretty commonplace to see all these cars all parked on the hard packed beach. So although I understand it now, you know, when I was traveling around the country, I realized, oh, you can't really do that in too many places. I mean, yeah, Washington has their, their rules too. They have completely banned fireworks everywhere in the state every year. It's just illegal to use fireworks, which is kind of unheard of in a lot of ways. You know, what do you do on the 4th of July? You can't even light off fireworks? Well, last year they made an amendment. You could come to this beach at Ocean Shores and light off fireworks. You just had to buy them at a, uh, like a reservation or something. They might do that again this year. Let us fire off some fireworks here. kind of a tradition of me and a few buddies to come out here and um, you know unfortunately people leave a lot of garbage here too you can't sleep overnight here but you will see vehicles uh, parked here overnight you just can't sleep so I don't know how they really moderate that when they come through on the beach the beach patrol officers uh, you know I guess I guess there's people who just kind of play along and if they get a knock at their tent or their vehicle, they just act like they were awake the whole time, but that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Um, after I leave the beach today when the sun sets, I'll show you where I usually boondock here. And I think the other big reason why this is such a popular place in the summertime here is, as I said, you know, if you just drive 70, 75 miles from Olympia, Washington here, the temperature can change from 15 to 20 degrees just in that time because we're, this is the Pacific Ocean. And so it's, it's a nice little peaceful place. A lot of people also come down here from Seattle as well just to, just to kind of escape the heat. Not that the Northwest is incredibly hot. Uh, the averages, I've talked about them here. Remember, I'm in the Olympia area right now, so we are west of the Cascades. Totally different climate east of the Cascade Mountains because you'll, it's like almost desert conditions out there and it can get really hot. But the average temperatures in Olympia, Washington in July are 77 degrees. In August, it's 78 degrees. Doesn't sound that high, but then you also got to think sometimes it's in the 80s. Sometimes there's a few days in the summer where it even hits 90 in Olympia, but it averages out, you know, because there are also some days in the heart of summer that are 60 degrees and either rainy or cloudy. So 
that's how it works. And then the beach, obviously here, like I said, 15, 20 degrees cooler here. Yeah, you, you weren't digging going outside. What was up with that? Yeah, you want to explain yourself? I, I wanted you to go play in the sand, but you didn't, you didn't feel like, no, you didn't want it. lunch or dinner I guess it's like 5 30 now took a shower I'm all relaxed and I'm gonna head out and go try to find a place to uh, park and boondock overnight rather than chance it here and then I'll be right back out here in the morning so yeah I'll at least show you show you a friendly spot for RVs in town Restroom right here uh, for rinsing off and changing. Got all the salt water shorts and everything. Uh, over to the left here is the convention center here in Ocean Shores, and that's kind of where I'm heading. Just turn right here, and this little road between McDonald's and the convention center is where I usually park my RV for the night. It's gonna make a U-turn. All right, I'm not endorsing this in any way, but it works. It's gravel off the road. The uh, green signs to the right says parallel parking. Okay. Use it for one night, up to 72 hours legally, I guess. And uh, what the heck fell there? Oh, my whole laundry bag fell off the top. Anyway, um, before I exit out of here, yeah, the, I still haven't done anything with the floor back here except tear the carpet out, but i uh, probably going to end up buying supplies here in the next few days. So i got to get the vinyl stripping on the old, prep the wood here, and then go pick out uh, the flooring that I'm going to use. So here in maybe like the next week or so, hopefully I have a video on an updated floor for the RV. So anyway, all right, have a good day, guys. See you in a couple days. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.